Right, this is Al Murray here in for Steve Wright. Now, I am joined by George Bragdon and Eliza Lazowski from Versailles. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the Thank show. You. <laughs> but you're not just George, you're the Sun King. You're Louis Fourteenth. Yeah, this otherwise a, known as, yeah. This is a great privilege. It's a great thing to have <laughs> one of the uh, iconic monarchs of all time in yeah. the studio with me. Thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's a <laughs> psychopath on Earth. Hey, I'm here to, <laughs> we're talking him up for now. Thanks, Eliza. Um, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and you're his long-suffering Spanish wife. Yes, Maria Teresa, Maria of, Teresa Spain, of Spain, whom I describe as the shadow in the sun, and Louis XIV oh. being the sun. Of and that was a <laughs> dynastic match, of course, not a love match. Well, she loved him. They were cousins, twice cousins, as mm. the monarchs sometimes, well, often yeah. were. And she sort of had a, a portrait of Louis XIV ever since she was a kid in the castle in Spain and sort of knew she'd marry him someday. She was actually really in love with him. Amazing, because it was an arranged marriage, but they actually really did grow to love one another. They it's a touching stuck, story. Yeah, they stuck by one another. <laughs> Before you get into the psychopathic yeah. stuff, yes. it's a touching story. <laughs> Lots of stories, it starts off well, but if it had just stayed like that, there wouldn't be a programme, would there? It would just been about how everything was peachy. They did not live happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Now, of course, Versailles, people think of it probably now as either a tourist attraction or a treaty. But the palace itself, when Louis XIV built it, was a conscious effort to move his court away from Paris and make people, if they wanted to meet the king, they had to come to him. That's what this is the story of, isn't it? It's a story about power yeah. and influence and control and the king trying to do that. Absolutely, yeah. We started season one at a point in Louis's life where he was at his most vulnerable. Mm. His mother had just died, Anne of Austria, and he was in his mid-twenties and suddenly had reigns on the most powerful country in the world at that yeah. time and came up with this idea to move everyone out to this swamp outside Paris and create this monstrous palace in which to put them in and kind of make everyone fall under one roof so that inevitably he could control them. Yeah. And it's amazing that it worked so well. It suddenly became like the exclusive place to be and everyone was fighting to try and so get... So it's get rather a... like, say, modern superpower ruler having a resort away from the capital city that people have to go maybe play some golf in the afternoon yeah, as well. absolutely, uh, yeah. Maybe yeah, it's a it, bit like Mar-a-Lago, that's all I'm trying changed, to say. Nothing's changed, basically. Uh, <laughs> Very nothing's clever, changed. yeah. Yeah. Season one, we presented the idea of how he had to try and get hold of this power. Mm. And the second season that's coming out is all about how he has to hold on to it once so he's it's obtained the it. the intriguing around it. And the Queen, of course, is as central to the intriguing as the King, isn't she? Because she controls the flow of people that can meet him and there's on lovers and, and yeah. all this sort of thing. There's only so much I think anyone could control Louis the Fourteenth. He pretty much just did whatever he wanted. <laughs> and everyone was just at his mercy on some levels. But he did respect the Queen as royalty. He didn't mm. particularly respect her as a woman or his wife. Yeah. But he had respect for her as his political ally in many ways. The amazing thing about the show is it's called Versailles, not the Sun King or Louis. Yeah. And the show is about people around him. No, it, and I, he was amazing at marketing. He came yeah. up with the logo, the Sun King. He was wow. one of the first. It was a whole construct like now, to, to have world domination. Eliza, you're French. Yes. So here you are in a drama about an iconic... French place and family. How do you come at that as a French person? Because a lot of my history of France that I know comes from a British point of view, yeah. a British perspective, the old enemy, that sweet enemy, the other side of the channel, France is another planet, all that sort of thing. What do you think of this? And it's being presented as well for British audience, isn't it? So Of course, yeah. I mean, it is funny because some of the sort of typical press reactions we've had in France have been like, how dare they tell our history with English actors in English? Then over here we've had, oh my God, there's a lot of sex scenes or whatever. So the sort of cliches about what individual yeah. countries will complain about. I have no issue with it. <laughs> I think the, the courts were very international, actually, is the truth of it. So to think of history as being just of one nation, yeah. told in one language, actually makes zero sense and is not historically accurate. Because, first of all, they were all cousins. Yep. Mm. Mary Therese was from the court of Spain, but also linked with the Austrian family. Yeah. There were some people from the English court, at yeah, the Charles French court, sister, Charles' Henriette sister. Is heavily featured in season one. Yeah, so actually they were a lot more international than we make them out to be. Yeah, Of course. It's okay. actually totally accurate to be doing this version of Louis XIV <laughs> with an international cast. It's, it makes sense. So yeah. you heard that here on Radio 2. <laughs> 
Versa is totally accurate. Right, I'm talking to Elisa Lazowski and George Blagden from Versailles, a hit TV show, we can call it that, can't we? They're nodding behind the glass. Yeah, it's a hit TV we're show. here as well. <laughs> <laughs> when you become an actor, do you want to play kings and queens? No, because seriously, yeah. because... No, 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 you do. Do you, you know do. what I mean? That's because like the because... cliche of becoming an actor. You yeah. sort of dream about wigs and big dresses and then... <laughs> this is a wigs and big dresses number, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. For What's all the... of us. Are your wigs, wigs bigger? And... Yeah, Who I'm has like... the bigger wig? I do. Is it such a big wig it has its own, like, wig trailer? Have we reached that level of... <laughs> I'm just going to say <laughs> I've got quite. four wigs, so... you got four wigs? Yeah. You've got four, but mine is heavier, yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. To see the actresses on set, it's sometimes really tough to watch because the corsets are incredibly tight and you have this huge headpiece on, don't you? Mm. And you sort of see Elisa slowly over the course of a seven-hour afternoon. People kind of... have been commenting on how good my posture is, but I have no choice. I just have to hold my it's head up. Have... It's a sort of workout yeah. wearing one of these wigs. Sort of is, yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. corsets, yeah. And the women at the time, they used to sort of get dressed when they went out for dinners or banquets or all of that, but we get to, to wear them for... 12, 14 hours in yeah, a row. Yeah, because you're filming in the things. Exactly. Crikey. Yeah. Now, the thing is, there's a programme after Versailles called Inside Versailles, which does a sort of historical verification with Greg Jenner and Kate Williams. Do you watch that and go, oh, no, we got that wrong? No. I, I, <laughs> we don't get things wrong. It's very, <laughs> it's very historically accurate. Mary Therese was blonde, blue eyes, and very short, so just like me. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's just to do with visual reference, but when it comes to the actual events and the political landscape of what actually goes on in the series, we, mm. we're keeping close to the history, yeah. I actually wasn't aware that the BBC were doing that until just before season one aired, and they said, oh, by the way, we've got this bit on after the show. And I found it kind of amazing, because with TV drama, especially when you're doing historical drama, what you're trying to do is tell an entertaining piece of fiction about a historical period. Yeah. So you consolidate timelines and you, yeah, you make are, events yeah, closer yeah, to one another than they were. characters and, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, and whilst trying to be as historically accurate as possible. And what was amazing about these segments were that they were picking apart bits that we'd done over that last hour and going, this happened, this happened, this happened. And it was kind of a a real sort of pat on the back watching it because you mm. go, yeah, yeah, actually, we've got it right. And we do have a historical advisor on set as well mm. that sort of comes and checks that we're doing. What, do they <laughs> step in and go, no, 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 she was still on the left, she was still on the right. Do you know what? Most of the time they're saying you're not going far enough. <laughs> and, oh, really? Uh, That's yeah, true. he's amazing, Mathieu Davigny, he's mm -hmm. the chief scientific researcher at, at Versailles. At Versailles self? At Versailles self, oh, that's fantastic. his day job. So they lend him to us on set and he gets to sort of say, yes, that's right, and no, actually he wouldn't have walked like that or... Gosh, been at that place at that time. And, how you know, fantastic. It's, it's amazing. So season two, or series two, I haven't quite succumbed to calling them seasons yet. Series <laughs> two starts tomorrow night at 9.30 on BBC Two. But just before we came on air, you mentioned that there's more to come. Is that right? There is, yeah. We... Yeah, we're just about to start shooting season three yeah. in two weeks. That would come after season two. Fantastic. Yes, uh, and, uh, um, <laughs> is, is the palace completed by this point, or is he still...? Um, no, it took most of his life to finish it, actually. So season two, we're seeing this kind of development of the wings mm. away from the hunting lodge. And season three, we get to potentially bigger and more shiny things. But in a way, this is the story of France and the French state, isn't it? Because he said, le tat c'est moi, didn't he? Mm. So what we're talking about is the development of France as a superpower under Louis XIV. So in a way, it's as figurative as a literal telling of the story, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it really was the centre of the world at the time. Yeah. And he was captain of it in this big ship of glass and brick and mortar. And wigs. <laughs> yeah, and wigs. Big wigs. <laughs> I've always wondered about getting a wig. <laughs> You should try. Come and visit us on set. We'll oh, yeah! Try one. Yes! <laughs> try them all. <laughs> Fantastic. It's been absolutely lovely to talk to both of you. Thanks for joining us. And Versailles starts tomorrow night on BBC Two at 9.30pm. George and Eliza. Thank you very much Thank for you having so us. Thank you so much.